the lore of the playground, the terrifying system of unwritten traditions, games, taunts and insults that rule the happiest days of every school child in Britain. Joeys, gay lords, fannies, knobs, you get the idea. Collins. Sir. Reeves. Here. Stevenson. Sir. Golan. Present. Godleman. Sir. Darby. Here, sir. Lee. Yes, sir. Mac. Sir. McGuinness. Yes, sir. Montgomery. Present. Mitchell. Sir. Carr. Sir. What's the capital of Thailand? Bangkok. What? You want me to Bangkok? Ah! There's always a condom, weren't there? In the, um, in the playground. And of course, that would be hysteria. Kind of, but obviously not as uh, hysterical as when there was a dog in the playground. Because that would just, everyone would say, sit down, but you'd just have to run to the window. Dog in the playground, dog in the playground. And everyone would know the dog. And it was always like a mangy dog when it wasn't like a poodle or like a chihuahua. It was like a black wow dog running around. Like, that's my next door neighbour's dog. It's called Ben. It's called Sam. Ben, Sam. Do me 50 lines. Punishment. There was um, a sort of hierarchy of punishments, you know. I, I, I remember lines uh, that you had to do overnight with your homework in your book. There was also lines on the board at lunchtime. We had, you know, formulas to make lines easier. And you'd start off by writing it across like that, writing it across like that. And then you'd start, like, doing three words going down, three words going down, three words going down, and then three words, and three words, and three words. And then the scientific formula that, was, that evolved over the years was, if it started with I, as they all did, was you'd get a ruler, and you'd just do an I like that. So you'd do it, so you, you had the I's done, like, in about 30 seconds straight away. So that was a lot of time saved. And then it was just a word at a time, a word at a time. I, 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 I. Will, 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 down the page like that. And it would always, even with your best efforts, always <laughs> come off the page. So by the bottom one, it was like there was no room for the teacher at all. <laughs> if you were messing around in the playground, uh, you had to stand against the wall. And really, there was nothing keeping you at the wall. It wasn't some sort of magnetised playground wall whereby they just went, boom, and you're like... <laughs> God, being bad, I'm stuck against the wall. For some reason, you went, oh, wow, I, I really have to stay against this wall. It was a mental thing. But then there were the more imaginative punishments. Um, you'd get a sheet of graph paper, you know, and you'd have to put a cross in every... In, not like the big squares, in every tiny little square of graph paper. He'd make you put a cross in there. And that was a little bit mental. Another weird punishment I had once was to write an essay about what it would be like to live in a ping-pong ball. And another one where I had to, for an hour, throw dice and write down all the numbers. I don't know whether the teacher was a gambler or something. He was trying to work out he had some sort of gaming school going on. But that was it for an hour, just doing that, which I thought was OK. I didn't find that that boring. Burns down. Your time is up. Careers advice. You are now 15 years old. You're beginning to be aware of many things. In particular, the prospects in life before you. I really think it's called, called Jig Cow, uh, which is basically a sheet where you had to tick inside boxes, and then the sheet was put into a computer, and the computer came back with your ideal jobs from the information you'd put in. So it was basically, you know, you're never going to succeed, and we want a computer to tell you that, because none of us as teachers really want to tell you you're going to be a mechanic forever, or, you know, if you, you know, I know you want to go to space, little Dan. I know you want to go be an astronaut, but you can't write, and therefore, the likelihood is you're not going to go into space. <coughs> I don't want to be the one to tell you that, so we're going to feed this information into a computer, and then it's going to tell you you're rubbish, so we as teachers don't have to. Do you remember you had a talk from someone about the different kinds of jobs there are? He's the man to look for now. I always thought, I really want to take advice about where I'm going to end up from a guy who works out of a porter cabin. And about 60% of the kids in my school, including me, got the computer print out. We opened it. Oh, so what's it going to be? Oh, you should be a prison warden. Yeah, I'd be good in prisons. I'd be the first one in the showers getting raped, wouldn't I? He generally advised everyone that I knew to become a fireman, essentially, which I didn't think was particularly great advice in the wettest city in Europe. But then he did work out of a largely wooden structure.
when your daughter goes to work for the first time, the excitement she feels with her own money to spend, and crowds of new friends. Yeah, we did have a careers advisor who essentially obviously wasn't having a very successful career, otherwise why in hell would they be a careers advisor? And they had no idea about anything other than nursing and secretarial work. So if you went in there and said, I'm thinking about engineering or becoming an architect or anything like that, they'd be like, oh, right. Mm. Got a couple of leaflets. Leaflet on nursing, do you want that? Nursing. Make sure your daughter sees her careers teacher at school and the local careers officer. The only career advice I had was when the career officer came around and said, what do you want to do? And I said, I don't know. He said, well, what do you like, what, uh, what do you like doing at school? I said, I like swimming. He said, right, the Navy. Yeah, next. <laughs> Music. My recollection is that we didn't have many instruments. So there was like one kid that could play the piano, so he obviously got to play the piano. And the rest of us were given a stick and a bit of wood. And they just go, uh, right, this is the music, I want everyone to play along. And we just all go, just hit it like some sort of caveman. Music lessons are a bit pointless at school. I, I could play the recorder through my nose. That, uh, it was quite, we used to play, after play we used to play tunes through our nose. If you're a bit like special needs, you know, what can I play, miss? And the one goes, if you're, like, if you're a bit touched, you can't really handle a glockenspiel. Just give them bongos. Like that. Brilliant. Certainly if you're a bit Rain Man. It always amazes me when I look at rock groups now, like people like Oasis and, you know, these sort of cool rock groups, you know, and the lead singer's dead cool. The only person who did music at our school was the lad who wore a brown anorak and got spat on a lot. Now, that wasn't very cool to be doing music in them days, and he didn't have a bag. He had a wicker basket. That's what his mum sent him to school with. I mean, he's going to get the shit end of the stick with that. The cleaners aren't here to clear up after you. Art. I never understood the idea of art at school. I mean, like, especially at primary level, what you're getting little kids to draw paintings and use glitter, that's pretty much what they'd be doing if you weren't in the room. There. Flicking became quite vogue in the 80s, flicking paint, fluorescent paint on black sugar paper. Your teacher would get to you and you'd be like, what have you brought from home, Josie? And I'd be like, I've got um, an empty carton of Mbongo and an empty packet of bacon Christmas. Uh, I think she'd know that all I'd done was just brought my leftovers from lunch. Um, but still, I think I managed to make a, a sunset with that, which I think she was quite impressed with. <laughs> You'd get like a flora tub, or a, you'd get a margarine tub, and put paint in with water, and then you'd get a straw and put the paper over that and blow loads of bubbles so you'd get a print on, and there'd always be one gimp who'd suck instead of blow and end up <laughs> having got a casualty. So you'd have to resort to sort of sticking that glue stuff, that fishy glue made of fish bones that you didn't know that at the time, obviously, but, and you'd just paint your hand, start off with a finger, then if you got quite good at that, you'd peel it off, cos it would be like as if you've got leprosy or something, you could just peel it off. Then a whole hand, that'd be good. Then if you had quite a lot of time to kill, then maybe, you know, go up to your elbow. One of my teachers, who was... He was a really good art teacher, and he said, um, He used to let us bring our albums in and things like that, so we could bring, I'd bring the Hawkwind album in, and we'd play that whilst we painted. But he was... He must have been in his 20s, and he, he came one day, he said, do you know, I had this really weird night last night and like, all, I was lying in bed and all these cartoon characters were like coming in and they were moving around on the ceiling and like pointing at me and things like that. I said, but it was weird because it wasn't, I was like awake. 
We're going, wow, that's so, that's mad, what happened there? And then looking back years later, you realise. If you haven't got any work to do, I will find you some. National events. Reg, Matthew King, one of my mates, works at Summerfield, he came running up to me and went, just, have you heard there's been this fire at this nuclear power plant in Russia and a big radioactive cloud is blowing our way? And then he ran off to go and tell Buddy Martin Auslander and left me with that bombshell. A big radioactive cloud is coming our way to kill us all. That's what Reg told me on my way in. That put the fear of God into me. The big one was the Charles and Diana's wedding. So I got dragged in for three hours making sandwiches for this thing. You know, and if we'd have known what was going to happen, would we have bothered? God, oh man, we soon learnt, soon learnt our lesson for a second marriage, didn't we? Yeah, well done. Cheers, that's all you're getting. We're not having a day off. We had an egg and spoon race. Comic relief used to be good. You know, it, when I was at school, it was actually funny. It, w it was still funny in them days. Uh, I do think if they ever get a, you know, sort of with famine and what have you, if that all gets, you know, sorted out and Lenny Henry's on his ass, he's not going to be able to do much else. I always hated comic relief. People sitting in a bath full of beans for starving Africans. Send them the fucking beans. And I don't know if you remember when they, I said they brought up, it was being held as being better than the Titanic. Mary Tudor Rose. And we were excited, you know, some teachers said they're probably going to find bodies and dead people. And we were like, cool, brilliant. Everyone sat there having your packed lunch. And then when it got brought, it was just a bit of wood. And everyone, most of the kids had fallen asleep and were like attacking each other. It was the most dullest thing ever. That and when one of the space shuttles took off and everyone was just hoping it was going to blow up. Let's have a game to see who has the softest punch. You go first. Oh! You win. Violence. The more creative uh, forms of pain were, in my school, uh, there was the Milli Vanilli, whereupon you'd go to someone and go, I need you, sha na 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 na, you're one hour. I sort of definitely get the emphasis on the need you, that was quite important. Favourite one would always be a bundle. Some would fall to the ground, also known commonly as the pylon, and immediately 10, 12 lads would just leap on him, one on top of the other, even some poor little fella, probably with his bag or satchel on his back, squeezing into his lung and liver. Um, that would always be fun. Smell my cheese is you put your hands like this and you say to someone, smell my cheese, and they bend down to smell your cheese, and you punch them. And people would fall for it. I've smelled a lot of cheese in my childhood, I really did. Posting was a big thing, where that involved um, four boys getting another boy and pulling him legs first against a post, crushing his genitalia. One of you would get one someone's leg, the other side would get the other person's leg, and then ram them thus, giving them the ball bollocker. People used to ask you, have your shoes been christened, and then stamp on your feet, but that joke kind of falls down because there's no legitimate way that your shoes could be christened. It was just, in fact, a way of saying, I'm about to stamp hard on your feet and new shoes. I do remember there was a boy at my school who was terribly bullied. Uh, I didn't join in at the front of the bullet. I was sort of third rank behind going, yeah, he is an idiot, but uh, could have been me. Uh, but I, I do remember he was once rolled up in one of those weird matte carpet things that are in lots of schools and then put on the top of some lockers, which I thought was very good as a piece of violence because obviously he hasn't actually been hurt. Um, but if he moves, he'll fall off the top of some lockers and he's in a carpet and he can't, there's nothing he can do to free himself or put his arms out to stop so he could be really badly hurt, but he's kind of done it to himself. It's the sort of thing that school children think will be a defence in front of the magistrates. And then presumably he'll sort of, the carpet will unroll and he'll arrive like a, you know, mangled, unlovely Cleopatra. The Circle Game. To this day, I cannot work out how this game came about. I don't know who thought it up, I don't know how it was thought up, 
but the circle game was you'd get that shape with your hand and then you put it below your waist and you'd, you'd say hello to somebody, hello Dave, and if they looked at the circle, then you could punch them. But you couldn't go, hello Dave, because that's rubbish. You have to wait for them to say, all right mate, how are you doing? And just wait for them to look at it and then punch them. Now, if you're, you're Dave, right, and I've just said hello to you, and I've just gone, hello Dave, uh, and you know that I'm doing a circle, if, as quickly as you can, you get your finger like that, through the circle, you then have the right to punch them. Take it to work the next day. They'll love it. They'll be so happy by the water cooler. Especially the guy who was obviously bullied at school. Bring it back up again. Refresh their memories. Right? Stand next to them, do that. The minute they look at it, you <laughs> smack them in the face. It's not like you can go like that, because in doing that, you've looked at the thing, so you've got to accept the punch. That's the other thing about it. All this nonsense, just punch someone. If you want to punch someone, then just punch them. Take one and pass the rest along. Collecting. Everybody must collect something. That seemed to be the rule. And a sensible thing to collect is, say, badges, stickers, bookmarks, little flags on sticks, and anything that you can definitely get around the till at Warwick Castle. You could get a, bis a rubber that looked like a custard cream, smelt like a custard cream, and some idiot thought it tasted like a custard cream and ate it and choked and they got banned. A hamburger rubber where you could take the cheese out and the gherkin and the but you know you could dismantle it and it smelt it didn't smell of burgers it smelled of flowers of course I had one that that smelt of um, cola that was in a, a cola style little sh had a sort of cola can style sheath to it and it was long and and that was really good because you could almost get that up your nostril like you know like a kind of inhaler. And the thing about these rubber collections is you'd never use them for actual... Like, if anyone used your rubber for, like, rubbing out, they'd be like, <gasps> no, it's not for that. It's a collection. It's a sacred thing. And I've, I've still got these at my mum's house, a big bag full of marbles. You know, you, you've got your rubbish glass ones, then you've got your chinas and your steelies, which were brilliant. There was a lot of kids whose dads worked at the foundry, so they'd get bolly bearings or bolly benders, and they'd be, like, great big balls that size of steel. So if you'd see some kid who'd be walking lopsided down there and you knew when he was coming towards your game of alleys that he's got a huge bolly bender in his pocket and he'd get out and roll it and then crush them all and then run off laughing. And stinky stickers, you'd have an album and you'd scratch the sticker and it would smell of Coca-Cola or strawberries or bananas and things like that. But after a while it all smelt like a generic mess. The best ever trick that I learnt at school was taking a packet of Golden Wonder cheese and onion crisps, eating the contents, and then putting that packet into a warm oven for one and a half minutes. You take it out, it's tiny, it's a miniature one. And then what you do is you get a safety pin through that and that's the best badge of all time. I was badges. I still at home have lots of badges. I, d I didn't like badges. I derived no pleasure from these badges. I never wore them. I think I had a vague sense that one day I might wear them all at once. And maybe I still will. Well, if I decide to kill myself, maybe I'll put all my badges on one jumper and throw myself off a building. If O'Reilly jumped off a cliff, would you follow him? Rival schools. What would happen is around lunchtime, suddenly word would begin to spread that there was a fight. The lads from Weatherbeat were coming down and there was going to be a fight. And everyone was like, oh, after school. And it was the only time where you were grateful for the nutters. Yeah, the, the, the boys' school in Northampton, every so often there was a rumour that they were all coming down after school to kick our heads in, and then we'd all say, what are you going to do? Well, and then we all had, like, this army-type thing, where you run round the back, Alan, you be look out like this, you know, in the science lot with some binoculars. They're coming! So it would be prepared Tuesday, it's all going to go off, we're going to have a big ruck with um, Walford, wear your rings, yeah? And, um, and it would all be prepared, maybe in the graveyard, that was quite a good place, it was around thriller time, so anything that could take place in a graveyard was usually good value. There were about six of us, there were. We didn't think there'd be many. We went down to this field and we were sort of waiting down the park, like we had a, a bat and, you know, a stick. And you're going, oh, come on, we're ready, we're ready, you're ready. And I'm, right, come on, we'll get, we'll get them. And then suddenly, honestly, it was like Zulu. The, 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 on it, this is so true, there were just hundreds, literally like the whole year. We thought, what are we going to do? There's six of us and we all just, and, we all, we, and actually, I think one of us said, to the trees, and we hid in the tree. What had happened sometimes is you'd send your third cock out first. You know what I mean? 
and he might sometimes beat the first cock of the other school, which makes your cock the hardest cock on the planet if the third cock can beat the first cock of the other school. Never happened, though. Every, they'd all gather, all the lads would gather it, be like, yeah, you know, swinging their cocks about, going, yeah, and then just no one would turn up. But it was always exciting, the afternoon where it was going to happen, even though it never did. Right, chairs on table and leave the room single file. End of term! Basically, the last week of term, leading into, like, maybe, like, a summer holiday or a Christmas holiday, it would always be fun week, so the work would pretty much go out the window. Yeah, you could bring games on the last day. Uh, Twister was always the big one to try and play with the girls. Uh, and then, again, one of the teachers would like to come play Twister with the girls as well, and the lads would just be standing around like that. Sir, can we have a go in a minute, sir? Hang on a minute, hang on. And he would just play with the girls, Twister. And it would always end up with him collapsing the girls and him always losing. Odd that. I first saw uh, The Breakfast Club, one of my favourite films in Mr Linus' geography class. What he did, he knew the film ass backwards, so every time he knew someone was about to swear, he turned the volume down. That's, I swear, it's what he did. All you did was he just wrote on people's shirts that Simon was gay and Stephen is a knob end. And then you read them back years later and you realise that your friends were incredibly emotionally sort of bereft and um, inarticulate and couldn't actually sort of form, have a good life, I wish you well. They were like, yeah, fuck off, slag. That kind of, it's like, oh, right, we were best mates. And there was one time that we, um... <laughs> <laughs> one time that we'd gone, I think it was at the end of term, and we'd gone up to the top fields near where there were like three blocks at my school. There was Oxford Block, Centre Block, and Tower Block, and it was just at the top of Tower Block. And we went up to the fields and drank loads of vodka, and then we came back, and it was before the end of school, and we we decided it would be a really good idea to wee down the steps of Tower Block. So we did that. <laughs> I must have been in the third year, and the fifth years we were all leaving completely. Uh, on the final day, they decided to have a riot, and they raided the woodwork rooms and got axes and saws out and chopped down the telegraph poles, and then smashed in the front doors. All the bike sheds went down, then got set on fire, and, um, and the poor headmaster, he was like, running around with gob on him and stuff like that, going, no, stop, please, stop. So whilst he was out in the playground, they all went into his into his office and demolished that. And you always said, when I leave, right, Mr. Mr. Smith, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shit in his car. I'm gonna shit in his car. And then the end of the time would come, you'd see Mr. Smith and you'd see these people. Hey, all right, sir. Hey, yeah. Cheers, goodbye. Never did it. I, I, who ever did the daring thing at the end of, end of the year? Liars. All liars. <laughs> I remember there were boys who left the school and came back and did a rebellious thing in my final year, and their rebellious thing was to put a small bomb in the organ loft of the school chapel, uh, and which made a very loud bang, didn't set fire to anything, but deafened the organist lady for two days. Robert Carlyle is training his mates to get their kit off. Good old British comedy. The Full Monty on Sunday at 9 o'clock. Next up tonight, dirty, bad, evil. Get the best of the worst.